I'm excited to be here today with Francis Atterbury from Hertwood because Francis was the person behind the design of what is Life Book today. And I'm here to talk to him a little bit about what his ideas were, how he came up with that, and how he actually sees Life Book performing. Over to you, Francis. Well, it's been a pleasure, Roy, to be here. I, as I think I said to you, I really enjoy staying in touch with what you're doing and it was a pleasure to get involved right at the beginning of Lifebook. Um, Hurtwood, as you know, and our work is specialising in creating very special objects for people who want to make something unique and I think today more than ever what's really interesting about books and the reason why I think books are resurgent and of interest to people is because of the actual permanence that they offer and also in a way of the truth that they embody. The very act of creation of a book and taking the trouble to write it down, to put it on paper and to have it there in black and white actually embodies veracity into what is done, embodies permanence and really creates a lasting memento which will still be there in hundreds or thousands of years. As I, you know, we often say you can, you can open and read the Doomsday Book from 1086, but you can't open a floppy disk from 1986. So yeah. when we got the chance, first of all, to start to look at what you were trying to create, the, the reason that I got involved and, and wanted to be involved was because it was so plain to me that you were putting at the forefront the experience and the needs of the client over the expedience of production. And some of the things that I've been involved with have seen, if you like, the rapid de-skilling of my industry and the creation of objects that have no real life beyond five, possibly ten years. And yeah. you were so determined to make something that actually retain the most essential characteristics of the craft of bookbinding whilst being affordable for people to make it. So you were trying to organize something that was essentially unique in an edition of one or 20, but affordable as if it were an edition of 20,000. And those were admirable sentiments, but very hard to reconcile. And during the course of the production, the first thing that we looked at was how it is bound. And as I say, one of the things that really was why we continued to work together even after all these years is because you would not compromise, and I wouldn't offer, something that was less than really archival. You have to sew a book. You, you have to fold the sections, you have to sew them with thread. And what that means is that if, let's say, in 100 or 200 years, your book is showing signs of wear, you can soak off the binding and you can rebind it. Yeah. Now, that is permanence. So you wanted it had to be sewn. That took us then on to the paper. The paper, what's the point in a paper that fades, that discolors? The finest, the best book paper in the world is actually American, and we import it called Mobile Superfine, and it was made in the 1930s, and it's, it's Library of Congress certified as archival, which means it won't fade or discolour for 500 years, or, as I like to think, your money back. And it's, it's, the, it's, it's essential, the paper and the binding. When you get those two things right, you have really a beautiful book. And then you start to put the other bits in, which is about grain direction. People don't realise that paper has a grain direction. The paper is an organic material, it's made of real fibre, and that fibre has a, has a length, it's, it's, those fibres align themselves in the paper making process in order to be along the line that you want to fold. That's why paper rips in one direction but won't rip across the other direction. It's very important that paper grain runs parallel to the sewing, to the spine of the book. And those tiny little things make all the difference between a book that will last five years or ten years and a book that will last 500 years or more. And your books, you were always determined, would last 500 years or more. 
I, think, I don't think people actually understand how many steps there are into binding. You know, it's it's uh, they just see a book as a bound book and they don't take that for granted. It's just it up. is, but I, it's kind of understandable because I think the whole secret of real quality is not to be obvious why it's really good. It's only really obvious how good it is when you see how bad it can be. Yes, and when people receive your books. I can't imagine that they are anything other than blown away and excited about something that, for God's sake, it opens flat. How many books these days are are, are fantastic? Uh, books I think are made modern. A lot of modern made books are excellent if you wish to raise your monitor off your desk by six inches, but are extremely bad for reading. And what is the point for a book if not to be read? And the content that people are putting in your books in life books in a life book, contains content of a person's life. That has got to be worth putting in a way that is going to last and is going to be easy to read and is going to be beautiful to hold. People trust you to make something beautiful, and my job was to create something beautiful. I'm so pleased we came together on this because your passion for making the end output beautiful matched my passion for getting the legacy of individuals so that you preserved those thoughts, memories and ideas of your dad or your granddad and preserved them in a way that was preserved forever. And then what's the point if you've got these precious memories to put them on average paper and an average book? It just becomes an average product. So that marriage and then that fortuitous uh, linking up in the early days has been wonderful. I think the only thing we probably disagree on is I have never been able to understand how you make them so inexpensively. I'm not going to say cheaply because they are not cheap books in every sense, but they are astonishing value. And it does, I admire you for doing it. Well, that was my commitment at the beginning and took two years of working out how to deconstruct the interviewing from the writing so we didn't have to send writers all over the world to get the price to a point that was affordable because if this is going to be available mm. to all the people who deserve to have the story of their father and their grandfather, then it had to be affordable, but not compromising on the quality. And you helped me on that, so I really